Welcome to Getting It Right by the New Zealand Society of Genealogists. I'm your presenter, Sarah Hewitt. For the notes that accompany this presentation and the other Getting It Right learning resources, please see our website www.genealogy.org.nz. In this presentation, we're going to look at one of the newest tools for our genealogy, DNA. Now there's a lot of science attached to DNA and I'm not going to get into much of it here. The notes that accompany this presentation will give you links if you want to find out more about the science. I'm going to stress right up front, and probably a few more times in this presentation, that DNA does not replace your paper research. DNA by itself is meaningless. You need your paper research to back it up. So DNA is just another tool in your genealogical toolbox. There are three types of DNA testing. The first two are Y-DNA, which tests the Y chromosome and therefore can only be done by men because they have a Y chromosome, and mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondria is inherited from your mother, so both men and women can do the test, but it only traces the female line of your family. If we put both of these tests on a chart, these are the people we'll be testing. Y-DNA takes us up our father's line, our name line if you like, whereas mitochondrial DNA takes us straight up our mother's line. There are two key things about these tests that you need to be aware of. Firstly, as you can see from the chart, it only does limited lines of your family. Now you may be able to find other family members to do other lines, but you also may not have those relatives to test. The second thing is that when you find a match, your most common recent ancestor may be as much as 500 or even a thousand years ago. So these are known as deep dive tests. If you're looking to confirm family history in more recent generations, then you need to look at the third type of DNA testing, autosomal. Some companies call it a family finder test. This test looks at your 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes. There's a lot more science to it than this, but I'm not going to get into it. For the rest of this presentation, I'm going to be looking at autosomal DNA because it's the cheapest, and the most popular, and for most people, the most useful. So you do a test having chosen a testing company, and you'll be notified by email of your results. And then the first thing that most people see is what I call the pie chart, your ethnicity estimate. And this is usually where the screaming starts. Where are my Vikings? Where's my Maori papa? But I'm Jewish. I have Indian ancestry. What happened to that Siberian husky branch of the family? Well, maybe not the last one. A key thing to note about your DNA is that you're looking at your genetic history, not your family history. I'm going to clarify this by using a chart. We get half each of our DNA from our mum and our dad, and they in turn get half each from their parents. However, we do not get 25% of each of our grandparents' DNA. We might get 10 and 15, or 20 and 5. It's all a bit of a lottery. And this is why we are different to our siblings, because they too have inherited a different mix of DNA. Now this diagram is also very simplistic, because each one of these great-grandparents is a rainbow of DNA, like the children at the bottom. So you may not have inherited any DNA from your Viking, Maori, Jewish or Indian forebears that your paper research says that you have. A little bit more screaming about ethnicity estimates comes when you upload them to other DNA websites. These are my ethnicity estimates from three of the big testing companies. And in fact company number one has recently rejigged theirs and mine looks like that now. Once people see things like this they start querying the credibility of DNA testing in its entirety. But the key thing to note about ethnicity estimates is the key word there, estimate. Each testing company is using a different set of subjects, they're looking at different time periods, and they're using different algorithms to work it all out. So, 
there is absolutely no standardization across the testing companies. So as you can see, your test results may come out looking completely different depending on where you've uploaded your DNA to. But at the end of the day, ethnicity is not why we do our DNA testing. We do it for our matches. Now this again is a very simplified version. What we're looking for is people who share the same DNA as us. So we discovered that our second cousins have tested and they match us. So this means that the DNA that we have in common with our second cousins who've tested comes from our mutual ancestors, our great grandparents. By seeing who we match to, we confirm our paper research. Taking it a step further from this, if we have a match that matches both ourselves and a second cousin, we know that they too must be somehow related to our great grandparents. Now they may be descended from our great grandparents' siblings or their cousins. The size of the match will determine the proximity of the relationship. And again, we're starting to head into science, but this is the general idea. For further information, have a look at the notes. And as I might have pointed out, and I still can't stress enough, you still have to do the paper research. So when is a good time to do DNA testing? Well, if you're like me and you've done a lot of paper research, DNA testing is a great way to confirm that we're getting it right. Now, if you haven't done much research, it may be a good idea to test older relatives in your family, parents, aunts and uncles, grandparents if you still have them, because unfortunately they may not be around when your paper research gets to the point where you'd like to be confirming it with DNA. Another time to start early is when you hit a brick wall in your near family. I'm talking yourself, parents, grandparents, either by adoption or illegitimacy. Be aware that you may not get conclusive results if you're trying to solve an adoption or illegitimacy in generations further back than your grandparents. Now my last point about DNA is probably the most important one. I've mentioned dragons before. They're things that you find in your genealogical research that leave you feeling a little bit singed. DNA does not lie. It has the potential to engulf you and to change everything you thought you knew about yourself. In the notes, I've added some links to places where you can find help and support if your DNA test results come out differently to what you were expecting. Thank you for joining us. For further information, see our website www.genealogy.org.nz and we'd like to thank the Wellington Masonic Club for their support in making these presentations. See you next time.